Yes, so you, know, you, can, you can just name it as a coefficient of lift, you can give the value and stuff, all those things is correct, but what is that physically? What is the so coefficient you told of lift? That it, is a, it is a capacity of the wing. Exactly, that is the capability of the wing uh, to produce lift out of the given configuration. That is what is called as coefficient of lift. It's just the ability of the wing to produce lift, it's as simple as that. And we are giving it a numerical value which we call it as coefficient of lift. So when you increase the angle of attack, put it in statements, you are basically increasing the capacity or ability of your aerofoil to produce lift and therefore it is going to produce more lift. Okay. All right. And why is it happening? We have already seen that we have the boundary layer here and you can see as the angle of attack increases, the area of cross section is reducing, equation of continuity, static pressure is dropping, you have more force, that's the after, after part of that. But yes, so uh, when you increase the angle of attack, your uh, coefficient of lift or capacity of the wing to produce lift increases and therefore the lift is going to increase. And where is the lift acting from? Remember, lift is acting from every single point over here. But we consider a point CP, which is called center of pressure, yes, yes. along the code line from where the entire lift of the wing is assumed to act. Just like your center of gravity. That is for the weight, this is for the, for the lift. So uh, the lift is produced everywhere. So basically, uh, you can see the lift progressively starts increasing with increase in angle of attack up to stalling angle. Up to stalling right? angle of attack, yes. Exactly. That's right. Now let's put it in a bit more in a proper way. So when you increase the angle of attack, uh, what is actually happening? So let's see this in a... Well, I thought of explaining this a bit later, but aerodynamic code, but since you have made this question came up here, let's discuss that. So, this is a code line, line joining centers of center of curvature of leading and, for, uh, and the trailing edge. Why I'm saying this definition multiple times is for you to actually disturb. So, yeah, that's, that's a code line, right? So, and you can notice the center of pressure is somewhere around the, uh, on the code line, CP, right? And that's going to, going to produce lift we assume the lift to act from this point which is the which is the cp perfect now i'm increasing the angle of attack so i have some angle of attack here angle of attack is the angle between the airflow relative airflow or the effective airflow so basically it's really the normally we define angle of attack using relative airflow uh, so we saw about effective airflow in the previous class when we spoke about induced drag and then the angle of attack there is called as effective angle of attack. So we will see that again today. But the angle between relative airflow and the code line is what is alpha, right? So now let me increase the alpha. Now undoubtedly you know that the lift is going to increase because when you increase the alpha, you have increased the coefficient of lift. The capacity of the wing to produce lift has been increased, right? So let me increase the relative airflow again. Sorry, not relative airflow, the angle of attack. Right, and then we have the code again, and now you can see how the angle of attack increased. Right, now when the angle of attack increases, what happens to this area of cross section? This is the boundary layer. The, the cross sectional area between the wing, the upper surface of your aerofoil, and the boundary layer reduces. And again, because of equation of continuity, we know that um, the static pressure is going to is going to drop further. Right, and what happens when the sir. pressure drops further? Yes. So where it is reducing, sir? You are saying where the thick, so where the area of cross section okay, is the, this one, okay. the normal uh, equation of continuity which we studied yes, earlier. Sir. Yes. As area of cross section yes. reduces, uh, the velocity yes. increases, which means dynamic pressure increases, and to keep the total uh, energy of pressure constant, the static pressure has to static drop. Pressure decrease, yeah. right? So static yeah. pressure drops. So the pressure differential increases. And when the pressure differential increases, what increases? Again, come back to lift equation. Lift is equal to half CL, a CL half rho V square times S, where rho V square is dynamic pressure, and CL depends upon uh, angle of attack and camber. Right? When you increase the pressure differential, do you understand how the pressure differential increased? Say for example, random values, if I put it here, you have seen all those things. 
it's a value here is 10 for pressure very very random value and it's say for example 8 here the pressure differential is 2 now the pressure underneath is maybe maybe 10 or even you can make it 9 practically but I'm keeping it 10 again and over here what happens the pressure drops further which means now the pressure is 6 and the differential is only is, is 4 now so what happened to the difference in pressure between the upper a part of the wing and the lower part of the wing it has increased right and what increases with that what is it affecting here is it affecting the area of cross section increase in pressure no. uh, pressure difference no is it affecting the velocity density the dynamic pressure no so what is it affecting coefficient of lift only. coefficient of lift yeah so it increases the ability of the wing to produce lift that is why you see that when the angle of attack increases the capability of the wing to produce lift and therefore coefficient of lift uh, increases this is how it is increasing Perfect. So let's get rid of this, these values here. All right. Now, why we are drawing this again is so what happens to the value of lift here? The pressure differential increase. CL increase. Yeah. Therefore, CL increased. And therefore, the value of the lift produced increases. The wing produces more lift because you have increased its capacity to produce lift by increasing the angle of attack. Right. And now, where is the lowest pressure point? So in this case, you can see the lower pressure point uh, is around uh, the region of maximum thickness, right? So this particular aerofoil, you can see the maximum thickness is somewhere around this line here, over here. Therefore, this is the point where you have the lowest pressure. What about here? Yeah, it is again the place where you have that least area of cross section, but that is no more the point of highest thickness. Because when you when you pitched up, now it is somewhere around here. This was somewhere around here. Right? You can see where this uh, we see we express all this as percentage of code line. So you can see that this is so much of a distance on the leading edge. Now you can see this is only so much of a distance. So what is happening to that lowest pressure point? When you increase the angle of attack, the lowest pressure point is actually kind of moving forward. Right forward. now, if you want to understand this even more better, let's again. Yes, Hiloni, do you have a proper sleep? Yes, yes, yes I had. You had? Yes. I had, but early mornings. Um, oh, this is an early morning session. Okay, all right, nine o'clock. <laughs> when are you traveling? What time are you traveling? Flight at three. Right. So you never have early morning flights? Are we in flight school? Yeah. Seven o'clock, yeah. seven thirty flights? Oh yes, yes, no, but I no actually I'm traveling to Delhi, not flights. No, no, no. What I'm saying is yes, you do have morning flights, right? So how do you manage that? Yeah, we do. We wake up every day at six and report at six forty five. So you're used to waking up at six? Kind of a routine, yeah, but still it feels <laughs> Okay, all right. All right, so let me increase the angle of attack even further. You can see it is very, very close to probably stalling angle. Now it's much, much away more than that, but just pictorial representation. You cannot really pitch up this, this further, right? Now, if I draw the uh, this boundary layer here, you see where is the point of lowest pressure. The point of maximum thickness of the air, aerofoil is somewhere here, right? But where is the point which is producing the lowest, uh, highest amount of lift or lowest pressure over here is somewhere here because the, that is where the area of cross section with the boundary layer is the lowest and therefore the pressure is going to be the lift is going to be maximum there so what can you say about the point of maximum lift production when you increase the angle of attack it's actually moving forward and therefore if you are taking a point CP which is the point where the effective lift is acting and you can see the maximum lift production is actually moving forward. What do you think will happen to a CP, which is the average? The average also moves fo forward. The average moves to a side where uh, the value increases, right? Correct? Therefore, CP also What's starts that? moving forward. CP moves forward here. The CP will be somewhere around here as well from where. And what about the lift? The lift will be very, very high. It's, it's lower and it's the least. Does it make CP sense? is moving forward only because of lift increases, sir. No, not lift. Sir. CP uh, moves to direction where the lift is maximum. Okay. And that maximum lift production point is actually moving further forward with increase in angle of attack. And therefore, CP is moving forward. 
with angle of attack right now let's look at uh, the same figure here now what i'm going to do is i'm not going to draw these three figures i'm just drawing one figure and i'll show you the movement of cp i'm not increasing the angle of attack because i'll draw the entire figure again right so i'll just draw one big figure here right code line again joining center leading to trailing edge relative airflow And you have the angle of it. All right, perfect. Now, uh, tell me the movement of CP. So normal, 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 like four degree angle of attack. If the CP is here, uh, this is the lift, right? Now, what happens when I increase the angle of attack? So the angle of attack alpha. Now, when I increase the angle of attack, what happens to CP? The CP moves forward, right? And what about the lift? Value of lift by increasing angle of attack, you have increased the capacity of the wing. And therefore, it's going to produce more lift. Yeah. Now, what happens if I increase alpha further? Lift will increase more. CP speed. moves further CP forward, forward. And lift, lift increases. Lift. We know this is not going to continue like this. Once alpha hits alpha stall, everything is going to crash back. Right, so you can see how that how the CP is actually moving forward. Remember, the wing, wing is actually you are increasing the angle of attack. I have not shown that here. It will look somewhat like this uh, in the figure which I have drawn here. I have just combined it together. Right. So what what is the normal pitching of an aircraft? What is the pitching moment of an aircraft? What is the natural tendency of an aircraft? Is it a pitch down or pitch up? We have seen this in the performance part, and it's we have also seen here. It is a nose yeah. down moment, and we know why. That's because of the lift. Uh, weight couple which is kind of couple yeah the the lift, lift weight. weight couple which is a balancing couple which actually uh, creates a nose down pitching moment so natural tendency of an aircraft is to is to pitch down and how do you counter pitch that down. so naturally normally the aircraft has a pitch down tendency because that is considered to be more reliable and more safe than having a pitch up tendency right so uh, how will you how will you counter this nose down but by keeping the Elevators. elevators and using the elevators we kind of induce a no uh, a down a downward force which is called as tail down force and that kind of balances this nose down pitching moment right so you can see a particular point on the wing uh, over which the aircraft has this tendency of pitching right pitching up and down right so the net effect of this pitching moment is assumed to act just like cp assumed to act from a point which we call as the aerodynamic center this is a bit of a broad concept. If you, if you, if you refer textbooks uh, concerning the aeronautical engineering, AME and stuff, you can see a detailed explanation of this. We don't require so much, but I'll just give you a small idea about what it is. Uh, because that has just been just told on the surface in your syllabus. Nothing, nothing more has been actually, actually dealt with. Right? So aerodynamic center is that point from where the net pitching moment of the aircraft, uh, aircraft is assumed to be concentrated. Now, why we assume a point like CP? Why do we assume a point like uh, center of gravity? Why do you assume a point like aerodynamic center? That makes explanation and study much more easier. We know that every single portion of the wing is producing lift. And if you start looking at the wing and start studying with that idea, you'll be so much of, so much confused because every single point is producing lift and you won't be able to know the behavior of the wing. Uh, um, after all so what we do is we kind of concentrate that to a single point and then look at the single point so it's very easy for you to understand the movement of a single point it's just like looking at a traffic with like 10 cars and trying to analyze the movement of all the car it's, it's quite difficult the same thing happens here right so that is why you even have aerodynamic center this pitching moment is assumed to be concentrated at a particular point which is called as aerodynamic center now let's see that aerodynamic center here with the same idea of the cp moving forward with increase in angle of attack so this is the code again as i said i'm going to increase the angle of attack but i won't be showing that you can refer the same diagram here uh, to kind of understand this right okay. so uh, we assume a point uh, which is called as the aerodynamic center so for a normal jet aircraft the aerodynamic center is around 25 percentage of the code we know that we express distances on the basis of percentage of code line so aerodynamic center is somewhere around 25% of code line. For, so this is an, again a point of assumption. Now we have the CP here. Okay, let, let me draw CP a bit further here. Uh, okay, CP won't be this further rear, but I'm just drawing it because I want some space. Uh, so CP is where the point from where the entire lift is assumed to act, right? 
Now you can see a couple here, uh, not couple, you can see a torque that is produced. So we have the aerodynamic center, which is the center of the wing, all the way here. And then you have a lift produced behind it. So what do you think is going to happen to the aerofoil? Or what do you think is going to happen to the aircraft? It's going to pitch down. Right? Is it going to pitch down? Because you have an aerodynamic center here and you have lift produced here. So the airfoil is going to topple like this. Right? Which means the aircraft is kind of doing this. That's what happens. Right? Now, so what is the what is the moment? So moment is basically uh, remember what is the equation for moment? Moment is basically force into distance, just like torque. It's a rotational torque. That's all, right? So uh, if, if I take this distance as d, I'll say d1, and this is l1. So what is the moment here? Lift the force is l1 into the distance between CP and aerodynamic center is d1. We have written all these things before as well in the note if you remember. This is the distance between CP and aerodynamic center. Now what happens when I increase the angle of attack? What happens to CP? The CP moves forward. Right? CP moves forward through the cord line and the CP reaches here. What happens to lift force? Increases. Increases, right? If I take this lift force as L2 and I'll take this distance now as D2. Now what is the moment? Moment M1. Moment M2 is L2 into, into D2. What, what, how can you compare these two values? Is the moment, has the moment increased or decreased? Same. The moment is the same. Why? Even though the lift has increased from L1 to L2, simultaneously distance reduced from D1 to D2. Now the net product is going to be the same. Right? Now let me again increase the angle of attack further. What happens to CP? CP will move further forward. At the same time, the lift force is going to increase and you have a moment M3, which is L3 into T3. Right? Again, that is also the moment is going to be the same. So, what if I so what what is the moment? So if you think about uh, talk, tell me about clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation. What moment is this? You have the aerodynamic center here. You have all the lift pushing the wing like this. So what direction is it? Is it rotating in the anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction? Anti-clockwise. Anti about which point? About CP or about aerodynamic center? Will the rotation happen? Center. Yeah, about the aerodynamic center. Just like you're screwing this part, it's going to rotate uh, along this one. So I can draw a moment. Like this, because that is the tendency of the of the aerofoil anti-clockwise rotation. What do you think this the moment about aerodynamic center be with increase in angle of attack? What is the moment about the aerodynamic center with increase in angle of attack? Is it changing? No. It's not changing. Even though CP is moving forward and lift is increasing, simultaneously the distance is decreasing, that the moment is constant. This particular point on the code line of an aerofoil where the net moment is a net change in moment is zero not net moment is zero moment is the value still there but the change in moment is zero is the aerodynamic center do you understand right we have written a, there's a question in the note which actually explains the same thing definitions everything is there in that particular question aerodynamic center did you understand what this is yeah, you can draw all these diagrams. You can take some time and you can actually draw all these diagrams into your into your note if you haven't drawn. I don't think you have drawn it this elaborate because I thought of telling this to you a bit further in the course when you have an idea about all these things in depth. But now I think you can understand. Do you understand what is the aerodynamic center? It is an assumed point on the wing where the net moment, net change in moment is zero. No, not net moment, you have a value for moment, but change in moment is zero. M1 to M2, the change is zero. M2 to M3, the change is zero. Why? Even though the L1 is the L2 is L3 is increasing, we have D1, D2, D3 progressively decreasing. So the net product, which is the moment, remains the same. Right? So about aerodynamic center, 
the pitting moment is constant. Or change in the pitching so moment. Why is it is sir? Why is it is L and D sir in moment sir? Uh, moment is actually what's moment? Moment is the is the product of force and distance. Remember, I told you about opening a door. Yeah, you have a door like this, right? So where do you keep the handle? There's no use of keeping the handle here because so you keep the handle here. Where is the joint? The the the, the trigger? The what, what do you call this? The fulcrum? If you know about the lever system, or or where the where the where the screwing part is here. So rotation is going to happen about this point anyway. So the closer you keep your handle, since the distance is smaller, the bigger the force which you have to apply it to open it. So what we do is, we know that the net moment is going to be same. So what we will do is, we will increase the distance. What is the advantage of increasing the distance? The force which you would need to apply now is less because the moment is the same. Right? The same thing happens here. So moment, this is what is called as moment. Moment is a product of force, force is a lift and the distance. So what happens when the CP is moving forward, the force is increasing. You see when the, when the, when the handle, if you keep the handle for very close to the point, uh, the, the force is actually increasing. But at the same time, the distance is also reducing that the moment is the same. It remains the same. It won't change. Understood? Yes. I'm not really, I'm not really upset with you making this question wrong because this is not a very easy question. So you really have to have this idea. Uh, when considering the effect of change, changing angle of attack, so see, ch so understood changing angle of attack on the pitching moment. When you change the angle of attack, the pitching moment, is it changing around about the aerodynamic center? No, it is not. That point is what is called as aerodynamic center of an aerofoil. Which of the following statements is correct? At normal angles of attack, the pitching moment is nose up. So normal angles of attack, what is the normal tendency okay. of an aircraft? Is a nose down. Uh, do you want to draw that? Are you happy with that that uh, explanation? Why is it nose down, right? It's again a couple that is formed. Perfect lift weight couple. It's nose down. So first statement is definitely wrong. Second, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center is constant at normal angles of attack. Now think about it. All these explanations are within the limits. That is from normal uh, zero four degree angle of attack up to stalling angle of attack. Beyond stalling angle of attack, all these explanations won't really work because the whole entire aerodynamics of the wing is changing your stall. That is why they're saying at normal ranges of angles of attack, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center is constant. It is not changing. The lift might change, the distance might change, but the product of lift and uh, distance, which is the moment, is not changing. And that point, that's the assumed point, is what is called as aerodynamic center. Next point is also something to say on the board. Aerodynamic center is located approximately 25% of the of the code point. Right? And moment about the aerodynamic center is the product of distance between the aerodynamic center and center of pressure. Those distances are just D1, D2, D3. It's all the distance between CP and AC and the magnitude of the corresponding lift force that is acting from those from the CP. That's what is called as the aerodynamic uh, center or the moment about aerodynamic center. So what is the answer here? He asked to find the correct statement, which means all the statements are correct. Uh, sorry, no, sorry. First one is wrong because it's one, not two, nose up. Three, yeah. It's a uh, nose down tendency. So first one is wrong. So two, three and four are the correct statements.